What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode number 84. You are here with your host, Nick McCallis. On this week's show, I also have Bronson Fiore. Hello. And Anthony Ta. Hello. All right, so we're going to start with some pretty, I mean, it depends how you look at possibly big news. Announced today, Amazon announced the Fire TV, which you may be like, whoa, this is like Roku or Apple TV. Why is this being involved with the gaming podcast? Well, the reason why it's being brought up is Amazon is pushing it to play games. Now, this is not a console. I mean, it's not going to be, it's not as powerful as a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. But it does have two gigabytes of RAM. It has a quad-core 1.7 gigahertz processor. It has a dedicated GPU. And pretty much it offers everything that the Roku does, the Chromecast, Apple TV, the remote that comes with it. It has voice commands so you can find content. Um, the controller, the video game controller is separate. It's 40 bucks. The Fire TV is 100 bucks. So if you wanted the box and the controller, it's 140 bucks. Um, there, you want to have Minecraft available on it, which is actually available for sale now. You don't have to wait for it. You can buy it now. So they have Minecraft. Amazon recently bought the team who did Killer Instinct. So they're going to be building their own type of games. They said there's going to be thousands of free games, but then they're going to have other games. They're going to be like $2, $3. And it's going to be pretty much be the model of what they're doing on what Apple's doing with the iPhone, but it's going to be this boxy you plug into your TV, which I personally think Apple's going to do in the near future as well. Um, this thing, but what, it, just, it reminds me... So, yeah, you're about to ask, uh, what do I think? It's like the Ouya and an Apple TV had a baby. Uh, that's, that's, it, it, this is what the Ouya could have looked like if it actually had funding. Like, real funding. It was not a horrible joke. Right. Uh, so this is it's kind of one of those things where I think it's a good product. I mean, for people that are wanting to get the stream stuff, and I do like, if you watch the video, it is very intuitive as far as finding content by voice. They probably have the best way of finding content. Um, as far as gaming, do I really think it's going to take off? Uh, not really. I mean, yes, you do have the aspect of playing your big games on the screen, which are more affordable. So is this um, thing, I, I forgot to ask free. you, is this thing Android-based, or what's up? What's the deal? Oh! Um, I don't think it's Android based. I think it's its own operating system. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Though. I'll have to look at that. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's its own operating system. But okay. it's, it's 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 like you said. It's not. It just does. It has a lot more funding than Ouya. So I do think that it will be much more successful. Just with Amazon pushing it, Amazon's pretty much the biggest online retailer, and they've got the money to push it. Um, and I actually just found here, so the Fire TV is based on Android. It's a custom operating system, but it's based on Android and HTML. So, yes, it's kind of using Android, but it's kind of unique in a way as well. Um, I think of a way is like Xbox One. Xbox One technically using a form of Windows, but it's still a lot different. Oh, so um, that's why it's so slow and shitty. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. Amazon's obviously very serious about it because they've started acquiring video game studios. And, I mean, video gaming's a huge market. Do I think this is going to eat into the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One? Absolutely not. Because we're not going to see games, like I said, it, it has decent hardware. It has better hardware than the Ouya has. But you just run into the issue where it's like, okay, 2 gigs of RAM versus 8 gigabytes of RAM. Then you have the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One chip versus this quad-core 1.7 gigahertz processor, which is pretty much what you find in most cell phones nowadays, which isn't a bad chip, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing compared to what's in the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Um, plus, you're just not going to get the big-budget titles on there. Like, yeah, you'll get your Minecraft, you'll get... A lot of indie games, probably. But the thing is, though, a lot of those like indie games can, they like they sell, man. Like they they, like Minecraft is a goddamn phenomenon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, like Ouya, like Ouya wasn't a success, but the big success from it was Towerfall. Yeah, and like I, I mean, and Towerfall is now on the PlayStation Four. At the PlayStation you, and, event I went to back in uh, February, I actually met the guy. Who created Towerfall? It's one guy. He created this game all by himself. Yeah, he 
he got some of his friends to do some like the artwork and the graphics, stuff like that. But he built the game pretty much by himself. And now he has a game on the PlayStation 4. It's Towerfall. It's freaking awesome. It's an awesome, awesome game. And it's indie, and that was discovered because of Ouya. So who knows? We might have a couple indie games come out of this that end up being branched, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. But, I, I mean, I do think this will be successful. Don't get me wrong. But as far as, and do I think it will have a, full, a sizable audience? I think it will have a small, mod, like a lot of the casual people. Like, it's just one of those things where, People, when sales people are trained, they're like, hey, we recommend the Fire TV. You can do this and that. You can buy your own controller that you can play these games on, including Minecraft, which is a huge selling point. Now, I know the latest Roku. The Roku tried doing some video games, like Angry Birds, where you use, like, the motion controller. But that wasn't really, like, it, it wasn't implemented well. Whereas Amazon, they're actually, like I said, they have a full dedicated gaming controller for it. So, I don't know. We'll see how, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, I think that, um, oh man, that's a really interesting one, because I think that there is a market for a system that is running these smaller games for developers who want to make, like, it should be the Wii U, but Nintendo, it just keeps fucking up horribly. So, but I think there's a market for a system that just does these smaller games, and those smaller games are making a lot of money. And I mean, last year we had Square Enix and several big publishers just bitch nonstop about the word over budget. These games aren't making enough money. And it's like, no, you just don't know how to budget a game correctly, asshole. Like, like perfect example, they complained Tomb Raider didn't sell 6 million copies uh, in the first month. or what? It was some asinine number. And then... You know, Dark Souls goes and sells a million, and they're perfectly content, and it's getting a sequel. And everyone, you know, everyone's wondering, like, why, well, why is this? It's because someone actually, you know, gave those guys a budget, you know, and made them stick to it and make a game for an audience, not just something that's, you know, general, like, oh, the mass market will love this. Like, you know, the mass market has Call of Duty, it has Uncharted, it doesn't need... Another one, like that's why Dark Souls do, did shockingly well. Shockingly in quotes, well, you know. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think there there is a market for this. I mean, like you you look over on the PS4, and right now there aren't exactly a lot of AAA things coming out on the PS4. But like, what are the really big successes on that platform right now? Like Mercenary Kings just came out; it's doing really well. Rezo Guns one of the better games on the system. I mean, yeah, it still has the AAA hits, of course, like Infamous, which we just did a spoiler cast of. But um, it also there's also a lot of, um, I guess, well, you know, there's been a lot of indie hits, and I think indies could be the real wave of the future. Whoever it gets on board with it quick enough, uh, you know, Jim Sterling said, yeah, like imagine a platform that just takes all the best indie games from Steam and throws it on a really cheap, easy download service. Right now, PlayStation's doing that, but PlayStation 4 is $400. And, uh, you know, I I was, you know, growing a family who people, like, my dad liked video games, and uh, my, you know, my dad liked video games, and I we were thankfully blessed, you know, blessed enough to where we could afford... Uh, systems like that most of the time. Or if we couldn't, it wouldn't be that hard to save up for one, uh, either through me or through other sources. Uh, but a lot of people aren't. Like, I mean, the the fact is the, the previous generation of consoles, the 360 and the PS3, are just now getting sub uh, sub about uh, <clears throat> sub Two hundred dollars uh, each, or they're going to be. I think they're both going to price drop this year and be sub two hundred dollars, and that's great because uh, I think they missed a giant market this generation that the Wii really tapped into of like here is this more affordable console. Because when I was working at GameStop, just some people are just not willing to spend uh, three four hundred dollars on a game system. Like two fifty is a bit much for them. So the fact that they can spend less, fantastic. Tangent over. Yeah, and back to like the indie thing. I was reading somewhere they're comparing like how many indie publishers or companies the 
and Sony has with the PlayStation 4 versus Microsoft Xbox One, and it's four to one. They're saying that PlayStation they have like a thousand publishers or companies involved in their indie program, while the Xbox One has like two hundred fifty. But yeah, that, well, it's crazy. Yeah, the, the, once again, the indie. I think indies are so like you know, pe- there are always going to be big block, big AAA blockbusters like your Destinies or your, you know, Destiny, Halo, Final Fantasy, but. Uh, Right now, we are really seeing the rise of the indie. I, I mean, like, like once again, there no indie is going to be a system seller, or very rarely, but they are system justifiers, uh, as Jim Sterling put it. Like, there, there is a big, like, Mercenary Kings isn't going to like sell some Mercenary Kings and Renzo Gun are not going to sell you a PS4. But they are totally reasons to keep the system active, keep playing the system in in between those big releases, you know. Um. Well, I just read up on it, and uh, I really don't know. Amazon says that this thing is not meant to be competing against um, game consoles, but geared towards people who don't own a console. But basically, kind of like the smartphone kind of game person. I I can definitely see that. I definitely see a lot of success in that. I definitely, I definitely see it in being popular with uh, kids. You know, like like for instance, some moms are like, "Oh God, I don't want to get them one of those goddamn systems." But it's like, "Oh, this thing's how much is it? A hundred bucks?" It plays. Yeah, this is a hundred dollars. Yeah, but play, if you it, want a dedicated controller, you got to pay forty for it. Okay, 140 bucks. That's still, you know, your nearest competitor is double that. You know, like let's let's get real. Well, the way I look at the way I look at, it is people are gonna buy this so so mostly for the online video features, and then they have the ability to buy a controller for. I don't really see them market. I mean, they could. Amazon could market this as a video game console, I guess. Um, I don't know though. It's just it's hard. I think it's personally hard to bring something in like that and get the cell solely as a gaming device oh i don't i I think the online video thing is a goddamn trojan horse that's that's what i think like i think that they like it's you know like kids are gonna be able to go to their parents and be like hey i want a game system and uh a perfect example this is anthony and i actually had a conversation (laughs) with (laughs) which uh well, somebody who thought games had no value, and they probably would never buy their child a game system. But like, oh, this thing can do Netflix and Hulu, and it's a hundred bucks, and it's not one of those goddamn game systems. But it does have the ability to play games. Uh, I definitely could see that as something that you could, uh, you know, market. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. I really don't. I really don't think this thing is going to be even used as a game system at all. For most people, because first off, you gotta get the game on a um, get a game on this, and it doesn't run Android. Uh, at least I don't think it says Fire OS, which I don't know if it's based on Android or not. But I'm just well, yeah, it Fire OS. It's like like I said, it's a custom operating system, cu- custom operating system that's based on Android and HTML. So pretty okay. much like like the example I gave, like Xbox One, technically Xbox One's running off a uh, version of Windows, but it's very custom. Okay. So let's just say <laughs> let's just say that oh you can uh, play Android games through this thing, but I don't know if people actually do that. This thing kind of feels more like it is kind of like Apple TV, in that you plug this thing to your TV, it's a tiny little computer that enhances your television viewing experience for ultimate visual fidelity and um really it's just kind of like a little media player it's not really something you play games you certainly can but it just doesn't feel like it will i mean i know amazon bought double helix games right they right. made they made the original sorry they made the uh, killer instinct remake um but that kind of thing isn't going to like boost this thing at all and considering that they literally did go out and say oh well this is just for people who probably game on their tablets or phones then what's going to make them want to transition from their phone or tablet to a 
TV and that, convince well, them to pay forty dollars for a dedicated controller. Well, it's the fact that they'll have actual, like, like not actual games, but uh, but bigger games that you can get with a more traditional controller. You know, like that. Yes, but that's... but if you wanted to make a bigger, more traditional game for uh, Android, why not just reach out to the insane number of people who own? Um, Samsung Galaxy phones instead of developing your game for this little Fire OS because it basically is just going to be a port from like you're just going to release it on the Samsung Galaxy and then just port it over to the Fire TV because I look at the specs of the Fire TV and it looks exactly like a high-end Android smartphone. So this thing is basically like an Android high-end Android smartphone minus the phone it just happens to be plugged to your TV. And then it becomes, why not just buy a cable to plug your phone to the TV, if it does that? Well, then you don't, because then you don't have a dedicated controller with buttons and... What's to stop you from buying a controller and Bluetoothing it to your Android device? Well, yeah, but you're going to pay 40 bucks for that anyways. Yeah, but then, and also, you don't hook it to your TV also, which, I mean, like, I'm not, you know, I'm talking like... Imagine if this got the best indie games from Steam, you know, the ones that are really popular, because most of those can run on what they've proposed, you know, and they've already got Minecraft, which, what system isn't Notch bringing that to, is pretty much, you know, I, I believe he said he would bring it to uh, a Nintendo system if they put one of his ideas into Smash. I forgot what, it, what his whole deal with that was, but still... So, I I don't know, man. Like this, this has a lot of potential, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. I have more faith in it than I did the Ouya. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. definitely cool. Yeah, when you're talking about something that has the name Amazon, like you'd be surprised that in addition to Amazon selling everything, including food, uh, they also make a huge amount of things. Like they make portable DVD drives. They make HD. They have H. They have branded HDMI cables. They freaking they do make. Have, they have they their make own video stuff. Stri- they have their own video streaming service. They have like their own video course. streaming service. They've made the Kindle and the Kindle Fire tablets for a while now. So you know they make a lot. They're huge. Um, I don't know. I think that the fire is like one of those wait and sees. I don't think this thing is going to be gaming whatsoever. I mean, like, oh, is Apple TV kind of like a gaming thing? Well, it runs iOS, so you theoretically could do it on there, but I don't hear anybody do actually doing that. Yeah, honestly, I could see Apple doing something where, like, their next Apple TV, they have a dedicated controller you can buy. And honestly, I think that would become a success just because of how renowned iOS is and <coughs> how they get pretty much all the popular... Like, imagine, like, for example... Like um, Peggle Two, Peggle Two has been a hit on Xbox One. I'm sure Apple can make arrangements and agreements there. Where I mean, imagine playing Peggle Three on your big screen. Imagine playing some of these other games, that uh, Plants vs Zombies, like playing games like that on your big screen. I mean, I think Apple would be a huge success with it, even more so than Amazon. But I th- like I said, I've been saying for a while. I think Apple's going to do that. It's just a matter of time. But we shall wait and see. Um, moving on from that, Microsoft has had a lot of changes lately. Uh, their CEO recently changed. Steve Ballmer is no longer the CEO. Um, but they've also had a change in who's heading the Xbox division. Phil Spencer is Phil Spencer is now in charge of all gaming. He's the head of everything Xbox. What do you guys think? I personally like Phil Spencer. Um, much better than Don Matrick. I, I think we can all agree we didn't really care look, about Don Matrick. Look, I said this before. Don Matrick was the spearhead of Xbox Stupidity in May, June, and I think part of July. Don, it was Don terrible. Don Matrick reminds me of a shady car salesman. So Don Matrick <laughs> was the spearhead of TV sports and Call of Duty. And I've said that, that before. Never gets, that never gets old. TV I'm pretty sports. sure. I'm pretty well. It's gonna get old one day. I mean, I it, like. I'm getting kind of bored of saying it that way. But he's the spearhead <laughs> of TV sports and Call of Duty. And I will keep saying that every time I mention that Xbox presentation. He was the spearhead of being an absolute prick by telling everybody that if they wanted an offline system, go buy a 360. And he insulted people's comments of when they said that they have poor internet. He said, yo, yeah, I don't have anybody who works in a nuclear sub, but if I did, I totally understand. 
<laughs> Somehow, I thought it was perfectly fitting for him to go off to Zynga. Yeah, that was a perfect fit for him. But... but anyways, Phil Spencer, I don't know much about the guy, because by the time I got around to paying attention to E3, he wasn't around at PlayStation anymore. He was yeah, at PlayStation, at... right? No, what? that was Phil Harrison. Phil, Harrison. Phil Harrison. Okay, that, okay, I got it. Phil right Harrison back. went from PlayStation to Microsoft, but no, Phil Spencer... Um, well, usually, well, well, no, he went from PlayStation to stabbing the fi- final dagger in Atari's heart. Oh, yeah, and then he went to Microsoft. Yeah. But Phil Spencer, no, Phil Spencer's never been with PlayStation. Yeah, no, but, he's, uh, he was always, I remember, I want to say, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to go pull out my book, but I want to say he was pretty heavily involved with the original Xbox and the... You know, in the 360. Oh, yeah, he's, so. he's been, yeah, he's been an <clears throat> uh, integral part of Xbox's success. So I think this is a good move. I think that, I mean, pretty much what that means is T3, we're not going to see Don Matrick on the stage at all because he's not a part of Microsoft. But, I mean, Phil Spencer has always played a large role of being on the stage. They always have him, the guy who heads uh, Xbox Live, which I'm forgetting who that is. Mark Witten, I think. Uh, yeah, Mark Witten. Um and then Phil Spencer used to be, I forgot what his position was before, but I think this is going to be a good move. This is going to be a really big move, so let's, we'll see what happens. Uh, we both, we all want good things to happen for both Microsoft and Sony, builds competition, I, to uh, work harder. And I just bought an Xbox One, so I've invested a shit ton of money into this company now, so they right. better, they better at least... My, I kind of have a thing with this sister. It's like, okay, look, I just need two good titles a year from you to justify this. Good, so Which I good. think they, I think they can definitely do that. At least now that they're building their, uh, building their studios and everything. So we've already got two pretty good games out of the console already. Between, I mean, depending on what you like, I love Forza. So Forza, I was, I was telling Bronson earlier, like my Xbox One right now is like my Forza machine. Um, I still need to go get Titanfall. I know, Nick, why have you gone Titanfall? It's on your most anticipated games list. I know, I've just been so busy. I, it, it came with my system. So, yeah. uh, alright, so... But between, yeah, Forza, Titanfall... KI, and, KI... Yeah, I've been the fighting games, Killer Instinct, uh, Dead Rising didn't really... I was disappointed by that. Rise is actually good. Yes, it gets really repetitive, but it's actually a good game. I don't necessarily recommend buying it, but definitely renting because the online's lackluster. Um, but Peggle two, camp- Peggle two is pretty great. Yeah, Peggle two. So, and then PlayStation Four, you have Infamous Second Son, Killzone, Resogun. You have a lot of good games over there. Mercenary so, Kings has been pretty fun. I've been enjoying that. Yeah. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So that's <laughs> that's Microsoft. But going back to play, let's go over to PlayStation for a second. So Jack. Trenton, we all know he's gone. His actually last day in the office was yesterday, April 1st. Um, so he's officially 100% gone from PlayStation. Where he's going, if he's even going anywhere, he might just be retiring. We do not know what's going on over there. But I have a question. What's happening to PlayStation? Like, I really hope this isn't like a bad sign because there's so many things. Like, So Jack Trenton leaves. Amy Hennig left Naughty Dog not too, not too long ago. Now, what Justin Richmond, who was also very integral to the success of Uncharted, is no longer with Naughty Dog. Uh, Stig Asmussen is no longer with Sony. And a lot of people were let go at Sony Santa Monica, which means that project was probably canceled. We heard that, I think it was the creative director of Drive couple, Club. Uh, yeah, creative director of Drive, Drive Club is no longer with there. A lot of people that are working on Drive Club Evolution, they've been let go. So it's like kind of scary. Like, what's going on with Sony? There's like, like yes, you'll hear of a change here or there, or someone being laid off here or there, but not. There's just so much happening all at one time, so fast. Like, what's going on? Did I you mention? Know. Did you mention like head lead writer of Uncharted just left Naughty Dog? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I really don't know what's going on either. That that is strange because like it's like, it's like, like I just like, like like it's like they're riding this massive wave of success right now, and all of a sudden you hear this stuff, and you're like, oh wait, is this the start? Like it, you start to worry and think, is this the beginning of the decline now that all the big big members of PlayStation just suddenly 
I, I, I mean, they suddenly start really slowly start not. leaving. It's just like it seems so weird because PlayStation is off to such a great start. I mean, breaking records, Infamous comes out, sells well. It's an amazing game. It's just like, wait, what's what's going on? Like Jack I, I Trend mean, was awesome. To, to be fair, awesome. maybe they're maybe they're like, just so it, like my theory on Jack Trent personally is well, there's two theories I have. One. He just offered a shit ton of money elsewhere. But I don't think that's it. Jack Chen just doesn't seem like the, the guy that would... Because he, you could tell he was a PlayStation guy. He loved the company. He loved the gamers. I honestly don't think money probably set him somewhere else. I honestly... And I could be wrong. We could see an announcement. Jack Chen becomes a part of another company. Um, just like Justin Richmond. He left Night Dog. Now he's with Riot Games. Um, but... With Jack Trent, I honestly think he's just retiring now. I think something that might have pushed him over the edge to retire would be the fact that Sony's doing this whole VR thing. Like, Jack Trent may be like, okay, I helped launch the PlayStation 3. That was great. He's launched all the PlayStation consoles, I believe, correct? I'm pretty know. sure he. I don't. I'm not sure if he was the one who particularly launched them, but he's been working there ever since. Well, yeah, he's been involved. And he was a huge, huge success with the PlayStation 4. And maybe he's just like, well, I don't want to get in, all involved with this virtual reality thing. I'm already be- I, I want to leave on a good note. PlayStation 4 has been a huge success. I've put in my time. So th- those are my theories. But uh, I don't know. I, just, I really, really hope Sony's like... And why, there's no reason why they'd be falling apart because they're doing so well right now. It's just like... What's happening? It's like Stig Asmussen supposedly an inside source is saying that Stig Asmussen like it was trying to build this project product that a project that kept getting canceled over and over and over again. So Sony's like, okay, we've gotta let you go. Well supposedly they offered him another job, but Stig Asmussen got his ego got to him and he wasn't gonna take another job if he wasn't the producer of it. So he left and then because the project was canceled, all these people got laid off, and then now Justin Richmond left Naughty Dog shortly after Amy Hennig left. So it's like there's all this drama going on over at Naughty Dog right now. It's like, just what's going on? It's like, it's almost like, which I'm pretty sure this hasn't happened, but it's almost like the Uncharted team, like, start, I mean, they didn't start Naughty Dog, but with PlayStation 3, they started with Uncharted, and then they had the team come in for The Last of Us, and they, like, kicked them out because... Justin Richmond and Amy Hennig were two of the most important people in Uncharted, and now they're no longer with Naughty Dog, and Uncharted 4 is set to come out, and I'm just, I really hope that we don't see an issue like what happened when Cliffy B left un, uh, Unreal, left Epic Games, and then Gears of War just freaking fell apart. I just hope we don't see that, because Uncharted is one of my favorite franchises of all time, and Uncharted 4... <laughs> Is a game I'm extremely, extremely excited for. It's my second most anticipated game that's been announced behind Destiny. I'm like extremely excited. I, I'm extremely excited so, for. It. I'm just really hoping that I, this doesn't negatively impact the game. And like, well, I just really hope that all of these layoffs and people leaving and all that stuff. I just really hope it isn't a bad sign for PlayStation. I think that the la- I, I don't think it is. I, the, PlayStation has plenty of talent, and they have plenty of new blood who could probably. You know, pick up the slack. And yeah, those guys are slash were important to the PlayStation success, but they weren't the only people there. Uh, and, you know, we've seen key people leave companies and companies continue to do well and thrive. So I, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not exactly um, too concerned about it yet. Uh, I know, still... yeah. I had, someone, I had someone email me. They're, um, they're asking about Seth Killian. Seth Killian is no longer at PlayStation. Like a lot of people don't know that because there wasn't like a big announcement. But, he hasn't been there for like months. Yeah, he hasn't been there for months. And people are like, "Well, why?" It's like, well, he was kind the of one game he worked to... on bombed like fuck. Yeah, the game he like came in to like make a success. PlayStation All Stars just didn't do anything. I mean, so... like the and the thing with PlayStation All Stars was like supposed to be their heavy hitter that that year, like. I remember, like, looking back at 2012, like, what came out exclusively for PS3 in 2012? Like, PlayStation All-Stars was supposed to, like, carry carry that stable that year. Yeah, I think um, that, I think the problem with All-Stars not doing well, I think it was just all about timing, because 
I think if they would have came out with that game when everyone was hyped and excited about it, I think it would have done really well. It, but, it, well, so, to be honest, though, I think that the game had difficulties because it. I don't think it ever shook off the stigma that it looked like a Smash Brothers clone. It didn't like, play like one. It didn't, didn't play look. like one. Because when you pick up, like, I played Smash Brothers a lot, and I'm a big fan of Smash Brothers. When I pick up the controller and, play, and played all stars i suddenly realized you can't play that game like smash brothers it wouldn't work but just watching the so, gameplay footage it just never shook off that stigma so everyone so you know people just i thought people just kind of brushed it off because it looked like a smash brothers clone so between so the vita and playstation 4 versions not for playstation 3 versions combined sold just over a million copies this does not include digital sales or any big box retailers such as Walmart. Which means they might have made some profit on it. So, yeah, they might have broke 1.5 million. And not only did it have the stigma of a Smash clone, but a lot of people who bitch about that game to me... First off, I liked that game a lot. I have the Platinum Trophy for that game. So, I obviously liked it. Um, but, I, you know... I... Re- was that it just didn't it was missing a lot of characters that people would want to see and you can say third party third party third party all you want they don't understand or they don't give a shit you know like that that's that's the thing at the end of the day because when you say because if you were to say playstation smash brothers to someone before this game they would say oh that'd be so awesome solid snake cloud crash bandicoot you know, Sly Cooper, uh, Nathan Drake. Yeah, but the problem Byro. is, Byro. yeah, but the problem is that some of those characters you listed kind of involves talking to another company. Yeah, it will. Which no, I know is where exactly. the major complications happen. Like Snake in Smash Brothers, in Smash Bros. Brawl, probably happened because the creator of Metal Gear went up to them and said, "Yes, I would like Snake to be in your game." Well, absolutely. That's exactly but, how Metal Gear but, ended up on the GameCube. Yeah, like, and then you go up to you think you can go up to like Universal Studios, which is owned by NBC, and ask, "Hey, can we put Crash Bandicoot in?" And they're all like, "Who's that?" Oh, we've got more important things to worry about. Go away. Well, no, well, yeah, but like at the end of the day, though, if you're making this game, that's what people would want. And then like some of the characters they chose, like everyone thought were super weird. Like Big Daddy is like. Bioshock started as an Xbox exclusive. (laughs) Yeah, like so. Big Daddy's weird. Like new Dante wasn't even out yet, so that was (laughs) weird. Also, yeah. But to be honest, I think they were with new Dante. They were trying to pull off the Metal Gear thing, where they put Snake. I mean, they didn't put old Snake, but they put Snake into Smash Bros. Brawl before Metal Gear Four came out, and they they put in like a uh, re re or remixed song. From Metal yeah. Gear Four into Brawl before Metal Gear came out. Yeah, but like, but that was still Snake that looked like old Snake, like the Snake you know, not the Snake that it would be. This this was like, so that was weird. And then the the then there were like, what what else, who else was in that goddamn game that was weird? Um, I don't know. Like they just had a really weird character selection for their third parties. Like Raiden, I kind of get. Like okay. Ninja Raiden was cool, Rising is coming out, I kind of see where you're going with this, but the majority of people would have wanted Snake. Like, they did really good with Generation 2, like PlayStation 2, like Sly, Ratchet, Jack and Daxter, Kratos, like, they really covered their bases with uh, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, but a lot of people are really nostalgic for PlayStation 1, Uh, and then they're, like, they just didn't tap into a lot of the franchises they owned. Like, we didn't get Wander from Shadow of the Colossus. We didn't get, uh, you know, we didn't... We got Isaac from Dead Space. What the f- We got Zeus from God of War. What the fuck was that? Like, that was so random. Yeah, they put Isaac right when Dead Space was having its massive decline. Yeah. Or, like actually, that... I wouldn't call it decline. I would call it its crash. You know, like, there are so many characters that they could have done that Sony owns, but... And third-party care, like... Okay, you got Isaac. You're telling me you couldn't get someone a little more relevant to PlayStation? I mean, I like the thing the fact that they got Isaac, which is e- EA, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have like com- got completely stoked if they took someone from Dragon Age or someone from Mass Effect. That would like that would make me super excited. You know, cuz it's like, or- what? 
I could play or, as an Asari. That's gonna be great. You know, something like that would get people's blood going. Or, or like even, or if you want to go for niche fans, you could have taken the characters from Valkyria Chronicles. You know, like there, there, there are all kind of you know, or and where are the Resident Evil characters? Like that you got Dante from New Devil May Cry, which okay, you should have got old Dante, but that's fine. <clears throat> but Resident Evil One, Two, and Three all were big on PlayStation One, and Four was a GameCube title at first, but then made it to PS Two, and Five was big on PS Three. So like, where is you know where are the Resident Evil characters? Where's the Grand Theft Auto characters? Where's you know, like there, there's a, there's a, you know, like just some of these picks just seem so fucking random and weird. Like just, like I think they did a good, like especially because they don't represent Gen One enough, and then they picked third parties in such a, like every single third party character in that game, except for Raiden, and even Raiden feels like this was obviously a marketing deal to market your new game. Well, I thought, uh, I, the guy from Tekken, I thought that made sense. That one, that was the one that made sense, now that I think about it. But, like, the rest of it, like, bi- and also, Big Daddy's level was from Bioshock Infinite. Like, why, they, they might as well have just said, this game is an advertisement for Metal Gear Rising, Bioshock Infinite, and Devil May Cry all coming out in the next four months. You know, <laughs> like, just, ugh. You know, and I think that's why it didn't respond with people. Like, if they, if they would have came out and they had, you know, like, two ma- years from now when we're going to get another attempt at this, because you know we're not getting another attempt at this for at least ten years, because this first fuck up, uh, they are honestly going to have to go to uh, to all these third parties and say, we want Cloud, we want Snake, we want yeah, Crash. Like, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though, is, like, a lot of the, like, a lot of these characters, to me, they don't exactly scream nostalgia, because well, to, Ninten- you, Nin- Nin- but, to but me, is, to me, yes. The thing is, though, I talked to, like, my friend Emily and Brandon, they both grew up as placed, Anthony, you and I grew up as Nintendo gamers, but, like, Quinn and Emily and Brandon, they all grew up as PlayStation gamers, so, like, I had a PlayStation growing up, and I liked those games, but I was primarily a Nintendo guy. But like, so if I talk, so you talk about Spyro to me, I'm like, cool, Spyro's cool, whatever. But if you go to like Emily and Brandon, they see Spyro as we see fucking Mario. You know, like that, that, that's how that works. So, you, you know, like the nostalgia hook is there for a lot of people that started or grew up on PlayStation. But they didn't draw into that really because a lot of the PlayStation 2 gamers who grew up on PlayStation 2 are still like not young enough to feel nostalgia for it. Uh, and then the and then the PS3 gamers obviously aren't. And then like, who do they have representing PS1? Parappa the Rapper, Parappa the Rapper, uh, Sweet Tooth, Totoro. Uh, I guess you could count Hayachi from Tekken. Like that is the like you compare that to Gen yeah, like, Two. Like, like I look at that, it's just like a lot of this is PlayStation Two and uh, PlayStation Three. Yeah, oh, whereas, Sir whereas Dan with, from Medieval. Yeah, and then yeah. in the case of Nintendo, Link. Well, Link goes way back to the '80s. So did Mario. So did Kirby. So did Kid Icarus. Like Nintendo had like a roster that you could extend all the way back to the '80s, so just about anybody could know them. Whereas this <coughs> list, just to me, it's like, what screams nostalgia to me is if you got something from, like PS One. PS One would probably scream more nostalgia to me because a lot of this, like, this looks a lot like PS Two and PS Three stuff, which seems kind of recent. And I don't feel like. That connected. Yes, I'm not a PlayStation person, but I kind of felt like this somehow lacks the punch compared I, to I the long list of the long list of Nintendo characters that have been around for thirty you, years. If you would have switched those third party characters for better alternatives, so you swap out uh, you swap out Dante for old Dante, you swap out Big Daddy for I don't know what was a third party game that did well on PlayStation that was in Gen three. Oh, Valkyria Chronicles. We'll call that one. Uh, you swap Someone out... Someone from Persona. That would have been fine. Sure. We'll go with you from Persona. That's cool. Uh, you know, or uh, the one of the Demon Souls characters. That, that would have been fine also. Hell, even Final Fantasy. If you put uh, someone from Kingdom Hearts in for the PlayStation 2 days, 
There, there you go. You put yeah. in Kingdom Sora from Kingdom Hearts, Riku from Kingdom Hearts, and then PlayStation One. I mean, <clears throat> I guarantee you, if you would have if you would have done this current roster with some slight changes to Gen Three and Gen Two, and then Gen One, you had what you have now, but then you throw in Crash, Cloud, Snake, and Spyro. Fucking so many, so many people would have been fucking excited. Like, so many. I don't know, though, because my thing is, like, one thing that bothered me was just the overall look of it. The whole thing was cartoony. Like, I didn't like seeing Kratos like that. I didn't see, like seeing Nathan Drake yeah, like that's that. Yeah, pro- that's another problem with All-Stars, I felt, was that in the case of Nintendo, most of Nintendo's franchises had this lighthearted, colorful, um, kind of very imaginative sense to them that when you see Link fighting Mario... Your brain doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just like, oh, Link is fighting Mario, and then you, and then you go and you see Sackboy fighting Nathan Drake, and you're just like, I am gonna be honest. What? I think Nathan Drake can fit as a cartoon character the way the man acts. I, I he could, I, he like, could, but with the world that Uncharted takes place in. Well, I, what's a better example? Um, Killzone, like Kratos, the Killzone guy, actually. Yeah, that, like, that makes more sense. Like Killzone guy versus Sackboy, and you're just like, what? Yeah, because that one is weird. Nintendo did, like maintains this imaginary <clears throat> quality that anything can kind of mesh together very easily. You can easily make crossover games. Where I, was it this mixing kills them with little big pants? Like, I the thing is, like what? the problem is though, is Smash Brothers they alter their art style to be cohesive. Like you look at, they alter it in slight ways to make it flow better. Li- with this, they literally just took their exact art style from whatever their respective game was. Like, you look at that new Smash Brothers that's coming to 3DS, all of them are cell shaded. Every last one of them. You know, and then. Wait, it is? Yeah, the 3DS one. All cell shaded. Every character. Uh, you, know, okay. you, you, you look at the Wii U one, like, all of them, like, characters that are more, I guess you would say, realistic ish, like Link, are made a little more cartoony and soft. Like, same thing, the, the only. Like one that didn't do this is in Brawl when they made Mario have realistic overalls. It was frightening. Um, it was kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, Everybody, but, it, it, it's just I just loved how everyone back in the day came up with the idea. Like if Mario ran on an Xbox 360, you could see every hair on his mustache. I'm like, do you really need to do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. like, what's wrong with the current Mario on the Wii U? Why you just keep the main cartoon art style? You just make everything nice and sharper. Yeah, and and fur. Who said? Is... Who said that? Because you make the jump to HD, you had to make everything look like real life. I'm sorry, seeing Mario in real life is, um, well, it's gonna yeah, be weird. Yeah, so so PlayStation All Stars like that. It was a good game. It's just that I feel as though that they like they had. It was a great idea. It's just that to get that game to work, you have to whore yourself to so many third parties. Because the people who feel nostalgia for PlayStation, uh, a lot of those characters are third parties. Crash, Spyro, Cloud, Sephiroth, Sora, Riku, uh, the Valkyria Chronicles characters. You know, just like you have to you have to get third parties. There's no way around it. You have to. And they got third parties, but they were literally all paid for through marketing dollars. If you want proof from that, why is the Bioshock level for at a time a game that wasn't out yet? I got a new story if Nick doesn't have one. Yeah, that's all I had. All right, I got a couple of easy ones. Uh, Hearthstone has just hit iPad in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. Uh, it's coming out soon to in other territories, uh, and it's all iPads are supported after iPad two and up. So. There you go. Also, it'll be coming to Windows 8 tablets and iOS phones and Android devices later in the year. Hearthstone is one of the most fun card games I've ever played, so there you go. Hey, Anthony, I got two news stories pretty much directed right at you. Oh, right. dear. Is it going to blow me uh, up? All right. How would you feel about a 17-inch tall statue of Princeton's Princess Zelda from Twilight Princess cast in high quality polystone and painted by hand. Only 2,500 of them are being made. That sounds really cool uh, to have as a collection kind of thing. 
but I'm very concerned how much this is going to cost, being that it is 2,500 will only be made, and it's hand-painted. All right, right, take a guess. Ballpark me. Go go ahead. Uh, 12,000? Whoa, way less. Like... (laughs) <laughs> um, way way less. i imagine i imagine that if this I, i'm sorry it's just okay uh this 5, is something 000, that, five thousand this is something that you or i could realistically buy right now oh 200 higher uh 400 little lower 350 yep well, I don't have to buy a PlayStation 4 this year. <laughs> I can always... I, I mean, that's assuming that if I could buy that statu- buy that figure at all. They're taking pre-orders right now. They're probably all sold out by now. But oh. then again, though, at the same time, though, I, it gives me some hope that it isn't sold out because it, people really do... You really do have to stop and think, do you really want to pay $250 on a Zelda statue? Well, let me of tell a Zelda you, game that you probably don't have much love for. All right, first off, I'm going to link it to you in the chat here, and uh, they're still taking pre-orders. The down payment is ten dollars, and it is supposed to be done by Q4 of this year. And holy crap, this company does a lot of figures. My You'd be God, surprised who makes figures these days. This prince oh. is a, okay. So. Um, Ugh. This Prince of yep. Zelda looks like a weird mishmash between Twilight Princess Zelda and Ocarina of Time Zelda. Well, they kind of ca- ca- kind of feels like half and half right there. I I just found something on this website that I've been wondering where the hell you find one, get one of these forever, and it is a Mar it is a Mario 3DS holder. It is a statue of Mario that holds your 3DS. <laughs> oh my god. I like, And it's only 30 bucks? I know where I'm going when I get my next check. Uh, Ooh. No, they got some really legit statues on here. Everyone check out first the number four figures.com. They got all kinds of stuff. Uh, Nick, are you one to put figures on your desk at all? Or in your, your house? Uh, not really my thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, no, they got. Oh, wow, that look. That is way too expensive, but really cool. Uh, get this. They have Samus's ship, Anthony. Uh, well, you can actually look it up right now. Like on the on the left hand side, one of them is uh, Samus's ship. Uh, like you scroll down a bit, the Metroid Prime gunship. It looks ridiculously awesome. Yeah. Wow, this stuff. Yeah, this stuff is definitely not cheap at all. Because when you're talking about, first off, it's 17 inches tall, so that's quite a tall statue for a desk. Um, and the thing is, is that whenever you see anything that says hand painted, yeah, that's oh, not cheap at all. No, no, trust me. As I, so, I've been working with Moondog Computers recently. If you're in Reno, you should come to us for a computer. Uh, and I we recently hired an artist to do custom cases and oh my lord yeah that trust me you you it it definitely can get kind of pricey yeah because uh, you're thinking about it the artist is taking a huge amount of his time to acquire the materials to paint to hand paint this thing in addition it takes a lot of precision and you can't mess up okay they're like this is one of the things is that when you hand paint something if you mess up you just cost the company um money uh, you know some of these so, aren't i'm gonna be honest some of these aren't too horrible like i pay like i've paid 50 dollars for figures and some of these are a little bit higher than that but not and then you no. have stuff like the, the Twilight Princess Ganondorf statue, which is $450. Oh, Christ. Well, Fierce Deity Link is only $130. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah, look at but yeah. Under... yeah, but whenever you hand paint something, it takes a lot of skill to not mess up, obviously, and you also have to like get the materials and... Yeah, actually, yeah. And you, Ocarina and... of Time Link is significantly smaller. He's only 7 inches tall, but he's only 100 bucks. Okay. 
So, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, that 3DS holder, that was only 30 I mean, I bet if you browse around here a, a little bit, you probably find a some decent price stuff. I don't know, that's just me, though, guessing. Some of these, though, are ridiculous. But, I mean, they're hand-painted, and... I mean, you, you could definitely... You know, th there's a reason they're priced like this. Uh, yeah, because like, well, first off, they make very few of them. Yeah, and when you're it's hand painted. Yeah, also expensive stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah these these aren't exactly machine made toys in a factory. No. So so yeah, it's like it kind of explains why. Um, I don't know. Like, there's this car company out in. Uh, there's this car company called Rolls Royce, and when they paint the little details on the really, like the really fine details on a car that isn't part of like the normal paint job of the car, they have a person hand paint it, and they and they don't get just like some random guy to do it. They get a guy that has like tens of years doing this, and makes very special care. And obviously, this kind of care costs a huge amount of money. Because trying to find that kind of talent and that kind of skill and that kind of effort is very rare. So, and, you know, when something is rare, it doesn't come cheap. That being said, though, um, you, that being said, though, the end result, though, is that you get something that's very unique. And so, no one else is going to have it. So, I, I don't know, know, man. Some of these statues, like... Uh, you know, I, it would have to be for a game I really love. Like, it would have to be for Mario, Zelda, Persona. But, like, that fierce deity statue, or the, or one of my favorite characters from uh, Ocarina of Time was uh, Darunia, the king of the Gorons, who uh, likes to dance. Well, you might want to check on the fierce deity statue because it says the shipping date was back in 2006, so they're probably all gone already. They probably are. It says that it's sold out or not right there. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yep. Sold yeah, out. Yeah, it is. I don't know, but for thirty bucks, one of those Mario 3DS holders, that'd be pretty hype. I'm not gonna lie. That 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 is a cool one. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, th these are pretty neat. Um, I'm not like I'm not sure how many I'm like willing to be like. Oh man, I'm gonna go through here and buy a lot of these because oh yeah we would do that if we had unlimited money but we don't yeah like but like picking and choosing though there's some definite ones i could definitely see myself uh picking up yep anyway uh on to my next news story targeted at anthony anthony you want to play persona 4 right mm, yes all right but you don't have a ps2 correct i don't and you you have no plans of buying a Vita anytime soon. No Vita. All right, but you do own a PS3, right? I do own a PlayStation 3. All right, well, uh, an ESRB rating for Shin Megami Tensei Persona 4 shows the RPG coming to PlayStation 3. No Ooh. release date is mentioned, but it gave an M for animated blood, partial nudity, and sexual themes, along with other content descriptors. It is mostly coming to PlayStation 3 as a PlayStation 2 classic atlas did not respond to comments when asked so anthony you might finally be able to play persona 4 goody if it comes out this summer that will make a great summer game oh my god dude that is a perfect summer game that's that is a that is amazing so let me tell you right now uh they oh my god what was it uh that this in my opinion would be per like, this is what they should do. to So, Persona 4 in the U.S. is supposed to come out Q1 or Q2 of next year. And Japan is supposed to come out Q4 of this year. This is what they should do in America, then. We're, we should get Persona 4, PS, uh, the, PS, the PlayStation 3 edition, in America in the spring. And then we should get um, Persona Q... Uh, in the summer, Persona 4 Arena, the Ultimax Suplex Hold in the fall, and then that will hold us over until the beginning of next year when Persona 5 comes out. 
Kaboom. Atlas, you know who to call if you need a marketing plan. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think this is a great opportunity because that game, uh, it got... Exp- Everyone who's ever played that game, every, even people who fucking hate that style of game, like, I know people who just cannot fucking stand JRPGs love that fucking game. Um, Look, um, a Metacritic, a good a good big game would normally score like a 7, and that would be considered good among user scores, because people rate scores emotionally. So, I would say a 7 is a good game, <laughs> according to that scale. Um... And uh, Persona is like one of the few games, I believe, last time I checked, that got consistent 9s, 10s from just about almost everyone who user reviewed it, which is extremely rare for that website. That's quite an achievement. um, It's a fantastic game, and I'm glad that more people are getting exposed to it. Uh, But like... And I think it does it because it provides a really good feedback treadmill. The story is really interesting. The characters are really likable. And it does a really good job of immersing you in that world. And you don't want to leave. Every person I know who's finished it is super sad when it ends because they have to leave that world. So uh, take that how you will. So uh, hopefully more people get to enjoy Persona 4. And hey, next year, Persona 5. So, that coming. joke you and Aaron made. Yeah. So, too real. Aaron, Come on Aaron, now. It's too real. Yeah, Aaron and I made a joke years ago about how, like, oh yeah, Persona 4 came out on PS2 at the last possible second you could release a PS2 game. Persona, Persona 5, yeah, man, can't wait for it to come out on PS, PS3 when PS4 is out. <laughs> Guess what's happening? <laughs> The yeah, joke is real. <laughs> that That is almost as funny as when Joe nearly got the name of the Wii U right. The Wii um, The Woo. I mean, we just, like, I, like, I freaking uh, commented and just like, can you imagine Miyamoto just going up there and saying, we have a new system, Nintendo Woo. <laughs> and then I was like, and then my next thought was like, Reggie doesn't seem like a guy who would say that. Yeah, no, Reggie would say it completely serious. Our yeah, he did, with, he did it with the Wii. The Woo. It's like the Nintendo Woo. Yep. <laughs> All of us would be sitting back in our chairs laughing at the name. But he would be Ugh. like the only guy who could turn... Like He's the guy who made the Wii name very serious. Oh, God. It was just... Woo, man, some of those things were like too real. So, Nick, are you, so now my question goes to Nick, because I know, Anthony, if this comes out on PS3, you'll probably try it. Um... So I'll question. probably buy it, considering that every single person tells me it's like, it's the greatest JRPG ever kind of stuff. It's so good. It's so... Uh, like, I mean, if it's like your favorite game ever, that clearly, that's probably a good indicator I should buy it. And if everyone's constantly telling me it's like the greatest thing ever, another reason for me to buy it, not just try it. Uh, so, that Nick, are you going to try Persona 4? I just I can't get into the JRPGs. I've tried. Those uh, aren't my thing. Oh man, you, you're missing out, man. It's a great game. It's so good. Oh god, Not my thing. Oh man. Anyway, uh. Oh man. Uh, so, do we got any other topics we want to talk about? Anyone want to pull any last minute news stories? I don't have anything. All right, I guess we're on to questions. Uh, just so you know, this last... I have one question that was sent to my inbox, but I'm trying to load my Vita to pull it up, but it needs an update because it's a PlayStation system. And it's a Vita. So, I therefore, I never use it. Um, okay, so... Anyway, uh, first question is from Crayty. What is more... What is more interesting to you guys, Oculus Rift or Project Morpheus? I would say Project Morpheus just because I feel like it's going to be more mainstream being with the PlayStation 4. Uh, Uh, It'll be interesting to see where Oculus Rift goes now that uh, Facebook acquired them, though. um, I don't really care either way. I'm kind of like, 
in the I'm already a too cool for a headset thing. Um, I'm sorry, man. Just like motion control gaming, as far as I like motion control gaming and DDR is as far as I'm going to go with the whole let's attempt virtual reality thing. Like until we can actually tap into the matrix, I'm fucking done. <laughs> but even though you don't want to be in the matrix, because if you get shot dead, you're dead. Yeah, that would sure. suck. That, that, would that would be really fucking... scary because it's like, okay, what's the best way to live? Don't play Call of Duty Matrix. Yeah, well, yeah, what would Don't you play put... that because you only live for about 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm going to play Persona 4. However, that is... Pro... Uh, you know what? That's the terrible. I'm going to play gonna Persona that. 4 on very, very easy. <laughs> there we go. But wouldn't it be really frightening if you look over and you saw like your friend... Um... What's up, friend? Let's just say Emily, right? Yeah. You see your friend Emily say the lines, I believe in myself, and proceeds to shoot herself in the head. No, that's Persona that, 3, that would be, but that, that would be really oh, fucked up, too. Yeah. yeah that, no. is like, that is such an oxymoron. I believe in myself, and proceeds to shoot yourself in the head. Yeah, the Nick, did you ever know about that with Persona 3? Like, it... So, the way the Persona games work is you summon, like... A manifestation of your true inner feelings uh, as a demon to go fight enemies, and and the way you summon them in Persona Three is you shot yourself in the head. <laughs> I did not know that. So, like, one that of the is famous, just dark. One of the famous lines that he was like, "I believe in myself." Kapow. <laughs> Taken out of context, everyone's like, "Why?" <laughs> yeah, like. You well, believe in your ability to shoot yourself in the head. I heard about that game, and I thought it was really... Like, I heard about Persona 3 when it came out, and I thought it was really interesting. But it was a PS2 game, so I kind of thought I'd moved on. And I almost never... I I would not have played Persona, uh, Persona 4 if it were not for Giant Bomb, because they did their Let's Play endurance run of it. And, like, after three episodes, I was like... What is what is this? Where do I go find it? How much is it? I'm gonna go buy this now, and I did, and it became my favorite game ever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, Anthony, what about you? Oculus Rift, Project Morpheus, don't give a shit. Um, for some reason, the moment that Facebook bought Oculus Rift, all of a sudden, I lost a lot of interest in okay. Oculus Rift. I mean. Do I believe Facebook is a super evil company? I have no idea. Maybe they are, but that didn't They're pretty really much ha- looking to become the next Google. Yeah, like something like that. But you know, but that didn't get. But that didn't. But that. But that didn't really factor into why my interest in Oculus Rift fell off. For for one thing, though, it's like Ocu- Facebook and Oculus Rift do very different things now if google bought oculus rift i would have had the same interest as i would before the purchase but because it's facebook for some reason it just i just kind of don't care anymore i don't know just kind of seemed like social networking giant buys high high high-end futuristic tech stuff what like facebook's the kind of company that bought instagram that would, yeah, like that's cool. Like, but oh, okay. So, all right. Well, yeah, uh, but so... so, so my interest in Oculus Rift kind of fell off. And then there's Project Morpheus. Um, I don't know much about Project Morpheus other than it's the PlayStation VR headset. Um, somehow, I don't. I have a feeling it's not going to be as refined as oculus rift because oculus rift is something they've been experimenting and working with for wow someone had the police show up that is surprisingly not my neighborhood that is me <laughs> and, and we yeah i'm the one that lives in the hood uh, uh, yeah but it's just like i feel like project morpheus probably won't have the same amount of refinement as Oculus Rift because Oculus Rift been, has been worked on for like years and they've been talking about it for years now whereas Morpheus has just been something that's been announced at GDC uh, a few weeks at ago. At the same time, we don't, to be fair, we don't know how long Sony's been working on this. I that is also Sony's, true. I think Sony said they've been working on this for about about three years. So Yeah, so that would be about the same amount of time as Oculus Rift, I think. Something like that. So, 
Yeah. I guess neither interests me more, but I'm kind of leaning a bit on Morpheus because it's like it's probably going to have it's probably going to be the thing that works with the PlayStation 4 and it's as sick as as ill and as motion sick as you're going to be once your experience with Infamous Second Son is over. It's probably going to be really cool to see for two minutes to experience the kind of thrill that the main character experiences when he leaps up a building. Oh, God. That's pro Like, you're going to get ill, but the, the thrill's going to be there. The vomit factor of going through one of those vents. Anyway, uh, next question is from Kyo Tenchi. Uh, what's your guys' take on the Conception 2 demo? Saw the Atlas tag. I thought it, this can't be bad. Atlas has made the most creepy old motherfucker ever. Dating scene part seemed like he'll be extremely easy, uh, sexual innuendo, and very unsettling. Gameplay and graphics just made me want to play Persona 4 and was boggled by LNR bumpers controlled the camera until I figured out it was a 3DS port game demo. Was okay slash meh. Uh, Conception 2, I've heard a lot of things about it. Uh, I have not played the demo yet, even though I've downloaded it. It looks really interesting, uh, though that the general tone I am getting is like, if this will, this is a okay game, but it will just make you kind of want to play Persona. So I don't know. I'm doing a quick looky at the website, and I'm not really getting any horror tones from it yet. Yeah, it's not supposed to be. Apparently, just the the old dude he is talking about is very creepy. Um. Yay, Japanese art style. Yeah, and yo, art. Yo, yo, let me talk to you about Igor from Persona Four. Uh, that motherfucker just like Igor kind of comes up as the type of guy who like, like yeah, he rides around in a limo all day and has like hot young girls around him all the time, but he's like a million years old and has this ridiculous nose that looks like it belongs to the great Gonzo from Sesame Street. So. Yeah, like, just like, oh, bury the bodies out back. Here's the shovel. You know, that, that's kind of vibe I get from Igor from Persona 4. Um, I don't know. Hey, we got a, we got a, we got a, we should promote some shows, guys. Like our but, spoiler. But we, did, but we didn't answer Jay Sway's question. Oh, oh, yes. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, Jay Sway. Why would someone buy the fucking Titan Z graphics card, Anthony? <laughs> why would they? I guess it's for the same reason why someone would pay a million dollars for a supercar. Uh, or why they would live in a two million dollar mansion. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, it, it. I guess it's every to... time you bring up like millionaires, I just keep thinking back to the Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know, like, that's, like, the reason. It's, like, why do people pay so much money for houses? Why do people pay much, so much money for cars? Why do people have their own private <coughs> jets? Like, why? And, you know, I don't even know the reason either because, you know, we kind of live in a class of society where um, we don't really understand that. Um, but one reason could be, I guess, NVIDIA isn't really building it to say we want a lot of people to buy this, I feel like they're just building it for the sole sake of saying we are the king of graphics. And if you don't believe us, buy this and see for yourself. I feel like that's what they're doing with Titan Z. And, you know, NVIDIA is just kind of like further, you know, putting their foot down saying you want the ultimate, we are the ultimate uncompromising performance you want a game on pc there's only one way to do it like that's what they're trying i think that's what they're trying to do it's like that one time when um you know big Daddy built the veyron um it's an ugly car it doesn't look very good um you can only drive it ugly well that front nose just looks weird but it's not exactly it's not a lamborghini i'll say i'll put it that oh, way oh absolutely not it is it is not as it's not as aggressive and as eye-catching as a Lamborghini. You can only drive the Veyron in a straight line because the thing weighs so much that you can't go around a corner too quickly. Uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, it's really big because it needs to house this gigantic engine and all its radiators. But So it's not exactly a practical car or a car that looks cool. 
but the one reason why people the one reason why Bugatti suddenly became a big name was because for a little while they built the fastest production car in the world that went 253 miles an hour there was really no point to it there was like there was really no place where you could safely drive 253 miles per hour unless you went to some private testing facility there was just no reasonable space but everyone knows Bugatti now because they built the 253 mile per hour car and well, I feel like and but the thing is is that everyone also knew, but now car logic doesn't exactly apply to video car logic for one thing that Bugatti is going to become a collector's item um, 50 years from now it will be an extremely valuable car for its importance nowadays well, nowadays, no computer parts become collector's item because they mass produce them so much yeah they mass produce so much like the only thing like uh, you, you obviously there's going to be some collectible items like I'm pretty sure like the NES like what few NESs are left uh, will be a collector's item oh well yeah if it's unopened but like no dude NESs are like $30 oh okay you can, you can find NESs okay. in fucking everywhere but like, uh, if you have an unopened NES, that's a collector's item. Uh, I, I really don't know. Like, I'm trying to think collector's items in like gaming or something like that. Like I the virtual, like, like the Virtual Boy might be a collector's item. It was terrible, but because no one bought one, and because of its importance in history as a failure for Nintendo, that could be worth something. I think any system that didn't do well is worth more cash, typically. Uh, just because you know, they're rare. But yeah. if, they're, if they didn't do well, but they still have great games, those are going to be the hardest to come by. Like, uh, you know... A like Dreamcast Ameri- might be collectible. Yeah, one day you might... Like, right now, Dreamcasts are worth fucking nothing. But, like, you know... Now, you want to talk about a system that actually has a lot of value to it. It's the Sega Saturn. Not so much the system itself, but there are lots of games for the Sega Saturn that are really awesome... That because they're really awesome and they they didn't sell that many copies, so there aren't that many out there. Are they sell them for just a shit ton of money? Yeah, because like a car has artistic value to it, which is one reason why they can be worth so much. Like the most expensive car in the world, I believe, is like some kind of Ferrari that sold at an auction for like sixty one million or something like that. Some number like that. It was like an extremely expensive auction. So you're not exactly buying a car. You're buying a piece of art because you're not allowed to turn on the engine because if you wear out that engine it's suddenly worth less. So I mean that actually happens. It's really funny, an R medium sealed like like Earthbound was a perfect example. Earthbound was a case of the only way you could play is if you got it on Super Nintendo and used copies if it were going for 60, 70 bucks. New copies were going for more than that. But now you can just download it on Wii U. So, I mean, like, I'll go on Amazon. I remember, right there. Um, I remember Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, mm. before, the Wii, before the Wii came out, I think the only way you could have played it that wasn't through an emulator was. Uh, you know, the N64, or you had one of the collector editions of Wind Waker that included the game on it. Yeah, so, I this somewhere. And I remember, I think I remember the N64 cartridge prices for like 50 or $60 or something like that, but the moment the Wii came out and all of a sudden anybody could buy it on Virtual Console, it crashed down to like Oh, the same thing 10. happened to Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII just fucking dropped like a rock. Uh, Earthbound, because the Wii U still doesn't have that, there aren't that many out there, actually still holds value. A used copy of Earthbound is $172. Hey, you want to know how much a sealed copy is, though? Two grand. $1,300. Okay. Yeah. And sealed that's not co- a lot of It's like crazy. Mega Man X. Mega Man X. Used copy, 25 bucks. Uh, sealed copy, 415 Man, I, like... The most valuable game in my game collection right now is Xenoblade Chronicles. How much is like, that? Running for like I remember, I remember, I did a search. Now they only sold it. Now this game is rare, but th- this is a game that people wanted, and it's rare because they only sold it through GameStop. Yeah, which that game was is... which was like what a what the hell decision. And even though my the case of Xenoblade Chronicles is really quite roughed up because I kept opening and shutting the case all the freaking time when I played it. Um, it's like sixty or seventy dollars used now. It's, it's so it's sixty dollars used, eighty dollars new. Yeah. In addition to that, it's a game that's likely not going to ever make it to a virtual console. 
because it's kind not, of not for it, not for a long fucking time. for a very long time because it's like a very niche i mean it's nintendo i mean monolith soft is owned by nintendo but because it's like that niche niche title nintendo has a bigger backlog of games that come ahead of xenoblade like that game that my problem with xenoblade chronicles is like it did that, so Anthony knows there's a tactic with game design that I can't fucking stand, and it's when they throw a phone book at you and say, read this or you suck. Yeah, uh, and Zeno, now, normally I can handle that kind of stuff, unless, in the case of Xenoblade, the game was so deep that I wasn't even using all the mechanics to get as far as I could. It was like, wow. Like, but anyways... I- like I like Final Fantasy X does it a couple of times. It's one of my favorite games ever. But when it did it the first time, I was like, "Dear Christ, the share grid is not this complicated." You know, you move to a space, you use the special item at that space. You, you know, not that hard of a concept to grasp. Uh. Anyway. So, yeah, yeah. So. So yeah. So anyways, we kind of went about our tangent collectibles there. But car set collectibles, the Titan Z, I don't see that ever happening because when you're talking about computer components being collectibles, I think the the first thing that comes to my mind could be harder than collectibles. The Commodore sixty four. Um, I'm pretty sure obviously those things are really cheap, but that's like the closest thing to a collectible I can see because the Commodore sixty four was very important in computing history because it was the most popular computer home personal computer ever sold now you said now you may say but hp sells a lot of pavilions well a single model computer that commodore 64 was like built for like six was built throughout the 80s exactly the same and they sold 21 million so the the exact same commodore 64 to put this in perspective the sega saturn sold like shit and when it was new it cost 400 dollars. now it costs 350 for a sealed new one and for a Neo Geo, uh, the classic Neo Geo, you actually, I Amazon doesn't have them listed, but they actually they actually started printing Neo Geos again this past holiday season, <clears throat> and you can get a new one for 170 bucks. And Neo Geo is actually a fr- pretty fucking awesome console. So I don't know, like yeah, but like would, yeah. But a perfect example, yeah, you can get that that system, seal, the Saturn, sealed for less than what it retailed for. But you look up Dragon Force, god damn it. Like, yeah, you want how much a sealed copy of Dragon Force costs? One of the best games for the Sega Saturn? Let's hear it. Thousand dollars, even. That's yeah, crazy. I think we looked at a, a sealed copy of Chrono Trigger, and they were asking like maybe a 2100. I don't remember the price uh, tag, but it was so- really, really expensive. Panzer Dragoon Saga, yet another amazing game for the Sega Saturn. $1,300. Sealed. I mean, just... Say, like, the thing is, game... And it's not even rare games that are the ones that sell. It's rare games that didn't sell a lot of copies. Uh, I mean, well, that that's, how, that's, how thing, that's how things become collectible. Yeah, that's, that's you that think, are sealed. Cause, cause you, think, you think about it. Is Call of Duty ever going to be a collectible game? No, because no. they make so much of it that it, that you know, unless it is like five hundred years from now. Um, actually, I wouldn't say five hundred years, but let's say uh, eighty years from now, where even then, when they've sold like freaking yep. twenty million copies, a, a sealed copy of Call of Duty Four costs sixteen dollars. <laughs> okay, uh, look, you'll be surprised how many things disappear over the course of eighty years. Yeah. Uh, okay, like. Can do you can you find something from the nineteen twenties that I'm well to be honest, some things from the nineteen twenties are still dirt cheap because there's so many of them or they're too broken to work. Uh, but you know, eighty years of you'll be surprised how things can disappear over eighty years. Yeah, um, like burning you know <clears throat> I mean, let's try to think of a really rare game. Uh well, <clears throat> um <clears throat> The Last Story is one of them. Uh, uh, that was thirty bucks. A, I, it was a, uh, well, yeah. But it's not very common. I mean, even you know, Persona Four new copies of Persona Four for the PS2 sell for sixteen dollars. Now, if you want to go now, the the thing is though, the key with that one is the collector's editions of those. A sealed one goes for one fifty. Mm. Granted, it's really though that collector's edition of that game. 
is the full soundtrack, a teddy plush, a t-shirt, and a calendar for 2009. So, uh, so just jump, you know, just jump all the dates five years ahead. God, Anthony, I'm I'm kind of freaking out right now because I just, just realized Persona Four came out six years ago. Two thousand eight. Yeah, December two thousand eight. Man, freaking every almost every week now we're like having these thoughts where it's like, oh my goodness, so much time has passed. Don't you I, love how uh, the older you get, the faster time goes? No, I hate it. I can't yeah, stand it. Sarcastic. I hate it too. You know, just like, I mean, it feels like yesterday that I was watching the endurance run when I was supposed to be doing work in my comp lit class and then coming home to play Persona 4 after track practice. Uh, like, oh, God. Shit, it feels like yesterday I was in college. Ugh. God. Yeah. So we're all becoming so... old men. We are. Freaking. Life does yeah, that to I, you when you get out of high school because, you know, I remember my cousin, like, when my cousin uh, went off to college, he told me, it's like, I feel old. I'm like, why are you old? You're only in your early 20s. And, you know, I was saying this, not really understanding what he meant. And then, of course, after graduating from high school, uh, life smacks you in the face and you suddenly feel old because you're suddenly, you suddenly have to quickly become an adult to survive in the world. Well, so, yeah, no, it's like... Everyone in high school who ever bitches about high school, you will find that when you are out of high school, that, like, life, it gets better in a lot of ways, but it also becomes a lot harder. Because, like, in high school, what did I have to worry about? Like, it's, like financially, and I, like, in high school, what I have to worry about financially? Like, oh, I'm making $7 an hour, but because I, because I don't have any expenses to pay for except for my cell phone bill and Gamefly... I could just have pretty much unlimited money. I mean, this is like, like, this is kind of why I feel kind of feel a little jealous of six year olds now because like, you know, six year olds living in, you know, living with, living with reasonable families because it's like when you're six years old, the worst thing that could ever happen to you is getting grounded. Uh, obviously, that's not, like in inside when, the house, when you're six in, years old is like the worst. It's the thing worst ever. thing ever because when you like um, when you are safe and you, know, you live in a reasonable neighborhood and you know you, there isn't really a risk of kidnappers or anything like that. The worst thing that you ever worry about when you're six years old is getting grounded and uh, or getting in trouble. And uh, when you get grounded and your video games get taken away, man, does it feel like the end of your life? I, all, so, fu- all fun has evaporated from the world and then when you're an adult you realize yeah getting in trouble getting in trouble because you did something a little bit wrong is the least of your worries yeah yeah like i, I look back at high school and i think just like my god like what the fuck just awkward high school me if i could just give you the knowledge i have now oh uh, yeah, there's a, lot, there's, at, a lot I, I, there's a lot of things there's a lot of things that we would tell our younger selves that is gonna make their minds blow apart. It's like, hey younger Bronson, you will love Apple in about three years. Yeah, that would have been blowing my mind. Uh, <laughs> let's see, that that was actually one. actually if you presented high school football Bronson to to today's Bronson, he's gonna be like, Who is this guy? Uh, he would say no, he would know it's me, it's just like, how did we get so fat? would be the first question. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you once again you gotta remember in high school i was working out like three three to four hours a day six days a week like i you know just yeah so so that'd be the first question the second question would be like what's the future like and oh man like if it especially fresh oh my god from my freshman year of high school to now like oh, so much horrible shit has happened that you just do not think will happen throughout high school, and for most people it doesn't. So like, like oh yeah, your old man is gonna be dead in a year, uh, which means just heads up, that means you're gonna like drop down two tax brackets or so. Uh, yeah, and when oh when you're in your twenties, your mom is gonna be disabled because she smoked too much, and like just 
all this shit that just like freshman me would not be prepared to hear. Yeah. But on the pl- on, on the reverse side of that, if he could actually like absorb that knowledge, I'd tell him, motherfucking get straight A's. Get straight fucking A's. Be an honor student. That way you can have someone pay for you to move out of state and go to school. Ugh. You know, even though you'll probably get it because it's more school, but hey, it's someone paying for you to live, you know, nine months out of the year. Oh, um, I don't know. Oh, like yeah. that. Oh, God, dating advice. Like, I look back at high school and, like, all the missed opportunities. And just like, oh, man. Yeah, like, I just thought to myself, like, oh, my goodness. If I could join FBLA earlier, I would have been king. Uh, uh, something, uh, something like that. Something like uh, that. Yeah, no, dude. I, I think about all these girls that would, like, drop hints in high school that I just Like, I would tell get. high school me, is like, look, you make videos. There's this video competition. Don't procrastinate the video. Go out there and claim first prize instead of sixth prize. Now, sixth prize is still great, but it was still a little disappointing that I didn't get fifth because fifth place is when they started giving out cash handouts. Oh, yeah. Aww. That was so, it was, it was kind of disappointing, but, you know, everyone's telling me, it's like, what's there to be disappointed about? You still got sixth, and I'm like, you know what, that's At true. a national level, too. At a national yeah, level. It's crazy what happens, that like, you have no clue. Like, like if you would have told me in high school that I'd be like, I mean, I'm 20 now, but if you would have said that, when I was in high school, that by the age of 19, I'd be living financially independent in L.A., I would have laughed my ass off. It's like, tell that to you, like, your best, tell that to Best Buy Nick McCandless. Yeah. I'm best like, Buy I'm, sales associate Nick McCandless. Yeah, I'm like, tell that to me as I'm earning, like, see, I don't like know what, see, I don't, $1.50 over minimum wage. See, the thing is, is that I don't know what to tell myself, tell my past self that would be surprising, because if I went to my past self and told and told him, Look, in college you'll be in college you will be the most stressed man ever. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that in high school because I was already a stressed man in high school. The, the, this so, sort of a, like I what is there about me now that would completely blow the mind of my younger self? I see, I would have had a checklist that goes like, okay, one, stay in shape after high school. Two, at these girls X Y Z are interested in you. Go, go hook up with them. Uh, third, get straight fucking A's, you lazy bastard. We know we can do it. Do it. You've got a college reading level. You, yeah, you had a college reading. Be awesome. Reading, you had a college reading level in sixth grade, you lazy bastard. You know. Um, Second, be more proactive in getting Quinn back to work. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, get yeah, like, Quinn again. unhooked from drugs, and by drugs, I mean World of Warcraft. <laughs> Seriously, he quit track to go play WoW. That's oh, well, he's got, he, he's got his life back in order now, so that's good. Yeah, no. He, rec- he, he recovered. It took the U.S. Army, but still. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty effective, actually. <laughs> pretty effective treatment in the laws. But yeah, yeah if you, like, if you, like want, said, if you like, want someone to quit and stop their drug addiction, sign them up for the military. <laughs> yep, the military would definitely shout that out of the system. Bronson, can you think of anything that would blow the mind of my former self? You watch football regularly? Yeah, that would sort of, that would be like, oh, I didn't know that, but that wouldn't be something that blew my mind in high school. Oh, that's something I would also do. I would say, hang out with Anthony Tom more and get him actually, to I, actually, I would go. Actually, I would go to my younger self and say, join high school football. And my younger self is going to think, are you crazy? My parents won't let me. <laughs> no, just beg, just beg, just beg. I'm just a lot. like, look, join high school football, and then you won't have this weird gut like I do. <laughs> yeah, no, oh my god, like, man, if I would have stayed in shape after football, like, just once again, I, I had like, I had a couple opportunities for Division Two football, so, um, you know, that's not you know great to a lot of people, but fucking a, you know, I'm sorry, mo- most like. For me, Division Two, as far as it's gonna go, because most middle linebackers aren't five nine. I'm sorry, They're like just ain't happening. Um, and I was way too slow to play safety. Like I remember, we we tried me at safety a couple times, and man, that did not go well. <laughs> well, it actually went well once. I got an interception 
uh, because I actually co- like I actually covered the wrong zone, and it led to an interception. <laughs> That's funny. Wow, uh, happy accident. I bet, right? I bet your coach was like, Bronson, you fucked up, but you got an interception. <laughs> He, he, he's just that, like that, re, that reminds he, he's me. Like, he's like you were supposed to cover the flag. That reminds me of the Jim McMahon Mike Dick argument. It's like, what did you call him? I called the screen pass. Why did you throw it to Willard? Because he was open. We just scored. What are you bitching about? Uh, <laughs> it was very. I think, I, think, I, think, I think they get angry like that because they don't want it to become a habit, and then something really bad does happen. Yeah, that's exactly. It. In our case, it was a lot calmer, but it's just like. You were supposed to cover the flat. It was like, why'd you cover the man? It's just like, I I forgot the, you know, I forgot what I was supposed to do for that play. It was like, well, you got the pick, so good job, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, like a happy accident, like that kind of makes you think that you should avoid the book, but then of course, when you keep doing that, you start making lots of mistakes. Yeah, no, what it and was, it becomes bad. What it was is they had this set where they had uh, three wide to uh, one side. And they normally set, they they throw a lot of deep passes out of that to go to the screen, which is why we have normally would have the strong safety or the free safety cover the flat uh, against that set. But it was uh, but for whatever reason they decided to go deep, uh, and I was covering the running back that got motioned out to wide, and they threw it up and I got it. So, yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know. Safety was uh, my problem with safety is like I'll, I'll even admit it. Like I have stiff hips. Like just, you know, like I like straight up. Uh, that, that that was one of my problems with safety. That and like safety and corner require a lot of running backwards that I cannot do to save my life. Yeah, for me, I'm physically small. So for me, it's kind of like I probably work pretty well as a defensive back because it's like I gotta use you gotta use your brain quite a bit so to uh anthony i'm gonna be honest if you played freshman foot like every freshman football team has like a million corners safeties and wide receivers because there are a bunch of small kids who just haven't gotten you know hit their growth spurt yet so like we have to put the like freshman year you have to put them at corner and receiver which for me freshman year that sucked ass because i hit my growth spurt early which if you hit your growth spurt early 90 percent chance you're playing line doesn't matter how athletic you are. They just need big kids freshman year there. Like JV year was the Yeah, I was quite I, well that's my problem is I was exceptionally small. Yeah. Because I because I was average height and then when high school started that was when it became obvious I was below average height. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. And Nick I know you played baseball, like uh what was, uh, I know you've told us before, but like why didn't you ever play football? I I the reason why I didn't play football was just because I was so committed to baseball. Like when I wasn't like even during the off season, I was still practicing, and I took baseball extremely seriously. That's that's how I was with football. It's just that our coaches made us do a second sport, uh, and I did track because surprisingly, a lot of stuff from sprinting carries over to football. Uh, you know. So I did sprinting and throwing, and I was an above-average thrower. I was a pretty average sprinter overall. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, if Nick, Nick, you're like, what, 6'2", 6'3"? 6'2", 6'3", yeah. Yeah, you probably would. Depending on how, like, were you really fast or just regular speed? Or... I was regular speed, but I had, I was very agile. We, we had a guy like that uh, on... I'm not sure if Anthony, you knew him, Trevor English. Yeah. Dude, he was one of our wide receivers my junior year. Like, any time that he was lined up against a short corner, it's like, yeah, just throw it up. Uh, just have him go get it. <laughs> you know, I remember we played this one team. They had, a, like, a five foot six corner going up against, like, six foot three Trevor English. And I'm like, well, this isn't fair because Trevor English can actually catch. And this is just to be jump balls all day. Um,. Yeah, no, I remember uh, my JV year, uh, we we practiced against the varsity team just as a scrimmage, and I was playing middle backer, and I had to cover this tight end. This tight end would go on to start for ASU. It was like covering a racehorse. Okay? (laughs) Like, 
like I finally think you know, and I figured out how you cover a guy that much bigger than you and that much more athletic. You hit the shit out of him right at the line. And then if he touches the ball, you hit him even harder. You know, like that's that's all you can really do. Cause he's gonna eventually either outrun you or beat you on a jump ball. Unless you take really good angles. Um no, I remember I that the another time we went against a division. There's actually so have you guys heard of this linebacker for BYU Kyle called Kyle Van Noy? No. This guy is gonna be drafted in the first, second, I would say at the latest, the third round of the NFL draft this year. Played against him in high school. Played for McQueen. Uh he was one of their defensive tackles. And you definitely know why he went to a Division One school and is going to be a, in a top NFL draft pick. Uh, cut block, cut block, and more cut block. Uh, I mean, that's basically because, like, t- it, unbelievably fast. Like, the difference between those guys who go on to play Division One at big schools and the NFL, it, like, you know who that kid is on your team. Trust me, you know. You know who he is. Right. Um, you know. We Did anyone against, on your team go? Uh, we had a couple guys recruited to D2 schools. Uh, and I think one of them had a chance to be an offensive tackle for a D1. Um, I know that we... Uh, I know our first game of the season when we got blown out my junior year, we played this team from Vegas who he ended up being a corner and a running back for USC. And he was so fast that the fastest guy on our team looked slow in comparison on film. <laughs> but like, like he had an angle on him and he got outran. And I was just like, wow, holy shit. Um, like once again, you know who those guys are. Like, I'm not sure if it's the same way in baseball, but in football, oh, yeah, you, just, it is. Like, you just know. You know like, like me, realistically, like if I worked my ass off and trained perfectly, I could have probably been a backup for a D1, maybe a starter for a really shitty school. Um, but like, but even, but, yeah. Uh, then again, like, Everyone's body type is built for different positions. Like, Nick, if you played football, you'd be quarterback or wide receiver, probably. Right. Maybe a safety or a corner. You know, Anthony would definitely be a corner or a kicker. No offense, Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, kicker. Uh, me, when I'm in shape, I have the exact body type of Maurice Jones-Drew. I am a tree stump when I'm in shape. You know, like, that's that's how it is. Yeah, you know, like five, five seven, two hundred. You know, five seven, five eight at the time. Now five eight, five nine. Uh, you know, two hundred and ten pounds of muscle. You know, like what? What better way to describe that other than that's a goddamn tree stump? Yeah. You know? The advantage you have on, on people is leverage uh, when it comes to tackling and whatnot. That's actually why one of my favorite player. I'm so pissed that Maurice Jones drew as a Raider now. He he used to be one of my uh, favorite players when he was on the Jaguars, uh, and it all became just because. Do you guys remember Sean Merriman? Oh yeah, that that play where Sean Merriman comes in on a blitz and Maurice Jones drew five foot six just blasts him. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, anyway, let's promote our shows and then call the night. Cool. So we have a new show. Uh, it should be up by the time podcast goes up. The spoiler cast, which pretty much is a show that we're going to do. And once again, I'll throw this disclaimer out there. We throw the disclaimer out a million times before we start talking about the game. But do not listen if you have not played the game. If the name does not give it away, spoiler cast, we are spoiling the hell out of the game. We are talking about everything about the game. So if you haven't played the game or don't want the game spoiled, do not listen to it until after you beat the game. Please. Uh, However, you do have the option of just wanting to spoil the game anyway, so feel free to listen, though, if you want. Yes. Uh, also, we did an interview with a nerdcore artist named Big Al. He has some really good stuff. Go check him out. 
Also, Super Mega Awesome Go Playtime is returning. The Gamecast is returning. Uh, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of starting to go on all cylinders now. What the hail will be done soon. Bronson Rants is returning. Uh, as we get closer to summer, we are going to start being able to produce more content because Anthony's going to be on break. And I finally got a job with a very steady, consistent schedule. Uh, so, yeah. It, uh, stick around. We're on YouTube, iTunes. Go on iTunes, review us. Good ratings. All that good stuff. Cool. Anything else before we close it out? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, all righty. Well, thank you all for listening to Unscripted Access, episode number 84. We'll be back next week. We are out.